Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the inaugural session of the week-long Rohingya Artifacts Exhibition organized by Center for Peace Studies, SIPG North South University, and IOM Bangladesh. Welcome. Welcome to the Covid Gym. I am Anu Kuri. I want to uh, thank you all for your presence today on the on behalf of Ayurveda Mariyati Assembly. I also want to uh, thank all the artisans of the camp who have been working really hard to make those beautiful artifacts. I want to start the program uh, by reciting a poem written by Gyan Rohingya poet Karnimi. Shahida uh, Wee. The name of the poem is Tradition and Culture. It is a historical duty for the young generations to value and to preserve Rohingya cultures and traditions. Tradition and cultures are a symbol of a nation. Tradition and cultures are a fundamental foundation for existence of a nation. Rohingya's tradition and cultures, music and dance, costumes and customs, ornaments and traditional handicrafts, literature and art, language, writing, Rohingya's traditional food and religion are invaluable national treasures. To long live Rohingya nation, let's explore and revive the lost tradition and culture. Let's boost our national pride. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to request Mr. Georgi Gigori, Chief of Mission, Ayom Bangladesh, for his opening remarks. Thank you. 
very much. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Good evening. It's great to see so many of you here. And uh, special thanks to our VAP guests. Thank you to the ambassador um, of the Netherlands and the High Commissioners of Australia and uh, UK for, for being here. And of course, my colleagues from UN and the Vice Chancellor and all my colleagues. Um, needless to say that we're committed to ensuring the dignity and well being of the Rohingya people through creating safe spaces for them to preserve their knowledge and culture and reconnect with the heritage through initiatives like this Cultural Memory Centre. Uh, now I would like to request Dr. Ishad Zakia Sultana, Coordinator, Centre for Peace Studies, uh, to, to uh, give our welcome address. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, respected Ambassador of Netherlands, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, my colleagues from the UN and media uh, development partners, and also my dear colleagues from North South University and IOM. I welcome you all to North South University, and I thank you very much for making time this evening to join this very special event on uh, the exhibition of the Rohingya Art. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I would like to uh, request uh, Ms. Mia Seppo, United Nations Resident Coordinator. Please, ma'am. Thank you. Um, a very good evening to uh, all of you, um, Excellencies, High Commissioners, colleagues, Georgi, uh, Vice Chancellor, and the team from North South University. I'm Delighted to see UK, Australia, and, and the Netherlands represented here, and of course our NGO partners, um, Farah, really good to see you. You know, so many of us in this room have, uh, over the past four years, we just had the four-year mark, been involved in discussions about how do we provide life-saving assistance, how do we manage this very complex crisis and the response, how do we... Um, how do we work towards solutions in Myanmar? And, and these conversations are challenging and, uh, and sadly there's no immediate obvious uh, answer to many of the questions we are struggling with. So I'm so happy to be in a different uh, kind of a space and conversation about the Rohingya. Um, I think none of us can, it's impossible to walk around the exhibit without being really impressed by the skills, by the arts, by the colors, and of course taken by the stories, as always. The, the human side of the crisis, just, you know, the, the wedding tapestry, the, the camp life, just giving that sense of what we're dealing with is human beings, and we should never forget that. Thank you, ma'am, for your very important speech. Uh, now, I would like to call his Excellency Mr. Annie Gerard Van Lee, Ambassador of the Netherlands, Embassy of the Netherlands. Good evening, everybody, dear colleagues, students, all the guests. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, in the first place, IOM and North University for organizing the exhibition and the events tonight. And my name is Anna van Leeuwen, I'm the ambassador of the Netherlands of Bangladesh. And for those of you who work here with an ambassador of the Netherlands, the embassy does, a lot of different does. Uh, we basically work in connecting countries. And we do that uh, promoting trade by doing consular work, engaging uh, with those people who might be inspired in this country, or to Bangladesh people who want to come to the Netherlands. Because culture has the, an arts, they have the capacity to move, 
and they can move in, in different ways. They can move, art, culture can move in time. That art can be a time machine. I mean, if you go to, to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, you can be placed in the 17th or the 16th century or in the Middle Ages in the Netherlands by looking at old paintings from Rembrandt or other famous Dutch artists. So that's a time machine going back in time. Also, the art has the ability to move in the future. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is a very important speech. Uh, I was working in this project since two years and uh, started like uh, the art can bring us in the past. One day I was uh, taking photographs in the camp. Some of the people were suddenly crowded. to see arts and artifacts of the Rohingya people reflects various aspects of their life and culture. North South University has in the past in the past organized a number of international uh, seminars and conferences on the Rohingya problem. We really feel that as a university we have the responsibility not only to the people of Bangladesh but we have a global responsibility and we believe that we should promote the debate, the discussion, the research that will inform policy making by our national government and international agencies. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I'd like to play a recorded video from the camp. The video was recorded uh, from Monaco Regions, or all the cultural regions, if you need to say this too. I invite you all to walk through the exhibition hall. Thank you. Thank you all. Hello. Um, so I'm I'm Shakira, and um, I am I'm lucky enough to be the manager of this project and working with this team. And I would like to lead you through the exhibition today. Um, so I will I'll take you on a walkthrough tour talk a little bit more about the objects and also contextualize them a little bit in terms of um, why we've chosen these objects and what we plan to do with them when the center opens and what kinds of activities we will have in the center. Um, before that, I would just like to say that we have a table of publications and posters that have been produced by the Rohingya Cultural Memory Center by our Rohingya agents working together with, um, with the IOM team 
All of our research is community based. Our experts are the only the people living on campus. So I think that's something that's a little bit different about these publications versus some of the materials produced by academic institutions. So feel free, please feel free to take whatever, take whatever you like. Um, um, also, uh, we would like to, we've prepared a donation um, of uh, key objects to North South University's uh, Working with Studies program. So this table over here um, is a capsule collection. Uh, many of these objects are found in the larger collection. So I have, I've got a list, we made it, we have a list for you at Ishra Papa of everything that's in here. So uh, we hope that, we're very happy to have this little collection uh, uh, housed in our South University. And it will hope that we hope it will make a, a big difference for awareness, advocacy, education. Um, and then we also have um, some objects that we would like to that we would like to uh, gift uh, to uh, the Embassy of the Netherlands um, as a as a token of our gratitude, of the gratitude um, of our team and refugees um, who have been working so hard to craft and um, tell stories about uh, their experience. So these objects over here, we can pack them in a trunk for you. Um, I don't know where you'll put them. <laughs> Um, so, if you would like to just walk with me, yeah, sure. I will start over here. Uh, so what we have over here is what we're calling a fishing capsule collection. So fishing is one of the main livelihoods of the Rohingya people. Um, they are rural people. Uh, the Arakan has a lot of waterways, um, and they've been building boats since ancient times and have many indigenous fishing techniques that have been passed down to generations. So here you'll see a lot of varieties of nets, um, different fishing traps. This is this little recipe is called the the Pula. You can put some strings on it and um, actually put it on your back to carry it in the backpack with the fish really inside. Um, and there are always there are all these various various tools and traps for catching fish. Um, so in miniature, and the reason that we've done it in miniature is that one of the activities that we're going to do in the center as a robotic activity um, is to have a little box of all these, all these fishing tools and to have educational sessions with children and um, adolescents. Um, and uh, we'll have a one of our cultural agents tell stories, explain what like, each of these different tools are, and have illustrations, you know, paintings made by um, some of the um, some of the artists that they would work with, some of the really talented artists that were working with them in the gaps, and that is one way of preserving and passing on that generation of knowledge. Um, and also, you know, we can show that they they know um, that um, they have that pride, um, both in the craft um, and in um, lab and skills that have been that have been supporting their people for generations. So this is so this is the fishing capsule collection. Um, over here, so then over here in this corner, we have a um, pottery corner. So if you come and visit us in Camp 18, um, in the Kukumala Wadi Mega Camp, you will find you will find some potters, a, a, a few teams of potters. We work with a team of Hindu potters, and we also work with a team of Muslim potters. Um, uh, the pottery techniques that they use are very ancient, very simple. Um, they you know, go back thousands of years to the civilizations of uh, Mohenjo-daro, um, and uh, similar pottery techniques can be found through South Asia. One of the unique features of Rohingya uh, uh, pottery um, and uh, other pottery traditions in South Asia is that you need a man and a woman. A man can't make the pot by himself, the woman can't make it by herself. It's very kind of um, segregated in terms of what the roles of the woman are and the role of the man is. So only the man works the wheel. And then the woman, she joins the top and the bottom of the top and she finishes it. Um, and so you really need you really need both working together in order to create a complete vessel. Um, so we have we've got some pots here. Uh, um, this bowl is for cleaning fish. You'll see that it's textured inside. We have a couple of missiles. Um, some decorative toy items. This here is a hookah pot. It's, it's a hookah pipe. It's a smoking, smoking pipe. 
pipe. Smoking pipe. It's a smoking pipe. So we have smoking pipes, uh, water pipes, um, and hookah pipes as well. Um, you know, it's, it's something that the elderly people like to do as a, as a pastime. Um, and, uh, and this is a kit. This is a thing. handle holder. Uh, there isn't uh, electricity in a lot of parts of the world.